Welcome back, Circa fans, to Natalie the Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury333, and this last match today is going to be between Icons and Dimefriend on Lonely Oasis. Let's get going. So Icons and Dimefriend, both fairly strong players. Dimefriend has been playing quite a lot recently. Like in the last few months, they've been playing constantly. If you go on a quick match, you're probably gonna face them. They're a good player. Going for Shield Bot right off the bat. As same time, Icons going for the Cloaky Bot Factory. Not a bad choice, fairly typical choice on this map. Thing about this map is that these hills here, they don't work well for vehicles. They work fine for bots. Bots can handle them no problem. I mean, okay, they sort of handle them. But the the main hill is actually is this one. This is the one where it's red here. Yeah, for a vehicle, that's purple. That's completely impassable. There's no way they can deal with that. So you don't want to deal with vehicles on this map. Amphibs occasionally are used, but amphibious bots, they can be a bit tricky to work with well. I mean, ducks work fine as a frontline force, as do boys, but they're just, I don't know, they, they are kind of missing something. It's a little bit tricky to make them work unless you have water to work with. But Cloakie and Shield, they're fairly solid all-rounder factories that can handle basically any situation. At this point, though, Icon's getting a bit of scouting in. Finding Dying for and having, you know, they've got shields. Shield versus Cloakie, everyone knows this is a fairly typical setup. And Icons as well, being a bit more defensive than Dimefriend. Dimefriend, we saw already, just started at the front lines. Like, they started well in front of the start box. The start box is over here. They went up front, which I can agree with. That's another common thing to do on this map, because of the way that the positioning is set up for basically everything. If your opponent's not going over air, you don't need to defend the top section with something on the top section. The, the top plateau gets defended by the lower plateau, and the lower plateau gets you closer to your opponents. Since you can choose exactly where to put your factory right at the start of the game, I mean, why not? So, at this point, Icons, because they started up top, they do get the advantage of timing. They do get the advantage of having a little bit more economy early on, which could be quite handy. Dimefriend might be running into a wall here if these bandits aren't careful, but they're being reasonably careful. Dimefriend is not aware of Icon's movements. So that was either a read or just a really good bit of timing. It just happened to work out. Even then, though, these bandits are going to have a very difficult time dealing with the glaze. I do not see them managing to deal with this without issue. Quite honestly, I'm fairly certain they're going to die. But they are going to get a conjurer out in the process, so at least they don't die in vain if they die at all. And they're indeed going to die. Dying Friend is not retreating. Trying to go for tactical combat, managing to get a glaive for the cost of two bandits. They, get it, they got the conjurer, though, and that is big. Like, that means Icons is going to be massively delayed in expanding to the Northwest. I mean, when's the next Conjurer even coming up? It isn't. Icons doesn't have any Conjurers on their factory queue. So, at this point, Icons, it, their expansion has stopped. Dying Friend, on the other hand, they've just gotten the, the top plateau. They're getting loads of stuff in the sea. I mean, just power, but still, power is always good. As we saw last game, it's extremely important that you keep your energy up. Like, massively, solidly biggest part of the game for economy is making sure your energy stays pace with your metal. Or keeps pace with your metal. Because if it doesn't keep pace with your metal, you're screwed. You've got nothing. <laughs> anyway. With Icons managing to defend their main base, they should be okay. Going for a counterattack as well. Which I don't see working. Actually, never mind. Maybe... If they manage to get into this Lotus here, the Bandits are in a good enough position they could come back and deal with the Glaives. And indeed, they're going to, because, point out here, Dimefriend is... I'm not aware of them. Never mind. Dimefriend has no idea. These Glaives have a pretty... They have a fighting chance of getting in here dealing some damage, but Icons... Icons pulling back, expecting there's going to be way more defenses than there are. Which is fine. I mean, that's perfectly sensible. There's no reason to throw your units away if you don't have to. Especially when you have a Convict getting a worker for free. You're basically digging revenge... Because Icons got rid of the Conjurer, Dimefriend loses a con. Sorry, Icons lost a Conjurer, Dimefriend loses a Convict. It all works out. And Icons at this point, much more confident. I guess they realize what is going on, what exactly is there, how much damage they can deal, or at least slight raids that they can stop. They can stop some defenses being built up. Not nothing. Actually, Icons at this point, doing fine in terms of army size. What is their unit value right now? The unit value, about even. Interestingly enough, metal used is a slight advantage for Icons, but Icons has also lost a little bit more than Dimefriend. 
course, in terms of the actual units built, Dying Friends going pure bandit, while at the same time, we're seeing mostly Ronin coming from Ikens with a few Reavers, and again, Ronin are the Rockos, and Reavers are the Warriors. Reaver, Ronin. But, that's the question, like, how is that going to work? Because if there are Glaives or Reavers in front to stop the Bandits from getting to the Ronins, then it's fine. The Ronin are going to deal loads of damage. If the Ronin get hit, then they are not fine. Because the Bandits are just going to chase them, just going to run around them, run circles around all their rockets, and never get touched. Now, at the same time, Icons actually quite a bit of good reclaim here. This is a big reason why Icons is actually managing to maintain their economy. They do have reclaim to work with. They don't need to worry about map control yet. But it's never a bad idea to grab map control if you can. And with the gunship plant switch as well, Icons looks like they're going for a bit more of a oh, side strategy, I suppose. Either just rushing in with a bunch of reapers, or not, re not rapiers, what is it called? The harpies. Harpies around the back. Possibly getting some wasps up and using those to build up expansions that are harder to detect. But overall, that's not their main problem. Their main problem is the bandits over to the south and the bandits over to the north and the bandits over to the north are a much bigger problem right on top of the metal extractors completely wrecking Icons' economy. I mean, Icons at this point, their economy has just been cut in half. They've lost their reclaim potential. They'll get more reclaim to work with, but they've also lost half of their metal extractors. And at the same time, over to the south, the bandits did manage to go down, not taking a whole lot with them. I mean, I say that as if dying is a hard thing to do. But they did go down. At the same time, the bandits over to the north are managing to get even more damage done. Not a whole lot of defenses in the main base. There is that one Lotus, but it doesn't matter. It can't see the bandit. This is actually just line of sight issues. The, the factory is blocking line of sight from the Lotus. Not really long enough to do anything meaningful, but enough to be cheeky and annoying. So at this point, Ikens is not doing especially well. I'm a bit surprised they aren't building anything. They have loads of resources to work with, but they haven't set up anything for their factories. And yes, it is still called Glaive. Sorry, Orphilus is asking, is it still a Glaive? Yes, it is still a Glaive. That is unchanged. I mean, generally speaking, the unit's names were changed if they were names that were in Total Annihilation. Because ultimately, 0k started as a mod for Total Annihilation. The names carried over. With the Glaive, that was changed a while ago. I believe that used to be the Peewee. And the Rock Over Warrior, that was the old name. Those were the old names. Those have been changed now. But anyway, Icons. I'm out of the game. Speaking of the Ronins and Reavers, or what were Rockers and Warriors, I mean, this is tricky. They're going up They're going up the hill, but managing to get up before taking a whole lot of damage, so at the very least, the high ground advantage isn't a major deal. And despite the fact that Dying Friend has a massive economic advantage and production advantage as well, Icons is going to at least take care of the commander, getting rid of the storage and managing to just destroy about 500 metal right off the bat. And at the same time, Icons is still expanding in the back in their own backyard, so they're good. They're keeping Dying Friend at bay. They're keeping themselves in a reasonably strong position to continue this assault. And while Dying Friend does have a decently expanded economy, they do have a lot of resources, they have a lot of metal extractors. They don't have a lot of protection. This northwest expansion over here is pretty much dead. The southeast expansion is almost definitely dead. Their main base is under some pressure, but it's probably not going to get attacked immediately, though... Icons being Icons, I could see them actually just going for that. I think they're going to be a little bit more cautious, though. Managed to get a few metal extractors here and there. And there's the locust. There's the fruit of the gunship plant. Half a dozen locusts going over around the side, and they should be able to get a fair amount of damage dealt as well. Now, at this point, Dying Frame does have radar, but they don't have radar where the locusts are right now. So, the locusts are completely unknown. They're coming out of nowhere. There is a lotus in time to stop them, and I just realized locust and lotus can be a little bit confusing. Not hard to say, but could be confusing to listen to. But the locusts will get rid of the lotus. And with that, the northwest expansion is completely dead. The southeast, the southeast expansion has been protected well enough, but at the same time, Dimefriend is still having to deal with the fact that there's gunship pressure. Loads of gunship pressure. They're, they're basically having to maintain an anti-air presence pretty much everywhere on the map now. Especially in their back. This section here, there's nothing. This one picket, that's nothing. Also, picket is now the new name of the defender. That's not going to stop the, lotus, the locusts. Wow, that is going to screw me up. That's not going to stop anything coming in here. The Stardust most definitely will. Why are you attacking that icons? You 
well, you know now. You've learned, relatively easy way, that's not the way to go. But at the same time, more attacks, more flanking. This is exactly the thing that you can do with the Locusts. And even then, the Picket is, like I said, not going to be a massive problem. Eichen's a little bit afraid of it, mind you. Not entirely sure why. It's not going to be a major issue, but there are places that they can attack. Those Locusts can go to safer targets, or they can hover over the water and not worry about anything at all. I mean, either way is good, really. Of course, at the same time, Dunningford coming back with a counterattack on the Harpies, and there's nothing really to defend against it. Again, a Picket or two. Picket and a Lotus. That's it. And no gremlins or anything for anti-air. No gremlins, no... I wouldn't... I, I would not recommend glaives. That is not the option. No tridents either. Interestingly enough, tridents would be the go-to option, I would think. But not what's being gone for here. And Icons just sneaking around back. They're escaping with their locusts. But the question is whether the main base is going to survive this assault of the harpies. And the answer is yes, it will survive, but it's going to take a lot of damage in the process. Or will likely survive. The problem is the amount of damage it takes in the process could make that point moot. At the same time, a few of the locusts are being caught out, but not much else. I mean, the amount of damage dealt so far to Iken's base is pretty crippling, considering that Dying Friends already got an, a, a massive economic advantage. They already have a threefold economic advantage coming in off that and wrecking the main base like this. Dying Friend is pretty much securing the victory. Granted, losing those harpies and leaving 360 metal for reclaim, that might bite them. Not very much, though. Dying Friend is still in such a solid position right now that, honestly, I don't know how Icons is going to get back in this. If they find a way, I will be impressed. I'll be massively amazed. But given Icons' current economic situation, the fact that they haven't been expanding a whole lot, even when they had the opportunity and were on the advantage, they had the front foot, they didn't take advantage of that fact. They've been very timid about expanding, and that's leaving them in a position where now they have six metal extractors to work from. And that's it. Uh, five! Sorry, five metal extractors to work from. This one over here is just now being rebuilt. So, 17 metal. That's it. That is not enough. Especially given that they aren't building anything. I really want to know what Icons was planning. Like, what what was going through their head when they were doing this? Were they... Like, I don't know. Like, what, what did they have in mind? Clearly, they're building some caretakers and such. They want to use that metal. But since they're not in the chat right now, I can't know exactly what they were thinking. I'm very curious, though, because this is a little unusual. I mean, Icons, I don't recall being the kind of player to generally go for repeat build. They actually have now, but... Oh, never mind. They do go for repeat build. That's weird. Clearly not the kind of player to go for repeat build when they're trying to do other stuff, but... Yeah, that was a fair amount of excess they had there in the process. I mean, at this point... Icons with 1,300 metal excess compared to Dianfroin's 300. And that 300 happened fairly early on now, so... At this point, Icons is... They're in a massive uphill situation. I don't think they're easily getting out of this, especially with the two Phoenixes coming in here, just completely destroying everything, scattering Icons' forces, and... Well, pretty much having them. Or maybe just decimating them. I think they're just decimated. Which I know sounds bad. But considering there's only 15 of them, that means losing, like, two. Regardless, Icons is still in a tricky situation. They're managing to get a fair amount of value, though. They do have about 1,500 metal value advantage. And that's been working for them fairly well. And as well, they are getting the expansion to the northwest. They haven't expanded over to the little section below the main plateau, which... I mean, that's a difficult-to-defend section, I'll, under I'll admit. But it's also four metal. It's not nothing. It's it's two metal extractors. But again, not a whole lot of constructors here that are active. I mean, the one in the main base not doing a whole lot. The rest of them in the main base all sorry, those are Kremlins. But yeah, there's only two constructors or conjurers, I should say specifically for Icons. That's it. There's the firework coming up, which is at least something. And Icons being able to maintain that a little bit. Oh, man, one more power generator. That'd be enough, or a little more wind. Either way. But, oh, wow, both playing worse than Top Cack. Wow, that's some shade. I was just casting Top Cack earlier, and they were they were doing all right. I mean, granted, they were also able to just rush in with Glaives and win against a cheese player. But, yeah, Top Cack can hear that. 
I'm gonna assume that the players were either distracted or tired or had some issues, like net issues or something, because, yeah, this is... I'm, I'm just curious. I'm, I'm curious what was... what their thought process was. Judging by the chat, though, is it sounds like it's just... I don't know, something weird. Something's off either rust or... or net connection or fatigue. Something. I don't know. I mean, at this point, Dying Thrones basically got this. There's the Firewalkers that's going to stop things, make things a little bit more difficult. But that's really about it. In fact, is there even anything they can really do? Especially with the shields on top of that. I mean, it'll hurt. A little bit. But there's not really much chance it's going to actually do any meaningful damage. Especially as the forces approach. The rogues, mostly covered by shields, should have no problem getting to them. And then on top of that, well... You got the Harpies in the backyard. There's really nothing Icons has at this point. Other than maybe the Zeus. Oh, actually, the Zeus's would be it. But even then, it's not enough. There's just too much firepower up front. Granted, the Rogues have been forced outside of the shields, so the Firewalkers have a little bit of opportunity to deal with them. But even then, it's just that Icons has a strong defense. It's the only reason why Dying Friend hasn't won this yet. But considering the amount of map control that Dying Friend has... I don't know why Ikens is still in this match. I mean, I admire the tenacity, but I just don't see anything. And Ikens Commander, very near death. Not dead yet. Possibly not dead at all. Hard to say. Firewalk's doing a good job helping that come along. That might come to pass. And no, it doesn't. Just barely Ikens Commander survives. So what avail is unclear because, again, there's not a whole lot of army left. And if that thug gets anywhere near the commander... Ooh! But it doesn't. Still, though, what are you gonna do? Like, really, what what options are there anymore? Especially with the Phoenix coming in, trying to do what they can to get rid of the commander, and... Oh, maybe? There's no caretaker coming for the commander's rescue! The commander, but the commander does go down thanks to fire, of all things! The fact that Ikens hasn't resigned yet is actually a little bit rude. Ow! There we go. There we go. Okay. I take that back. Ikens, just at the point of possible rudeness, throws in the towel. But yeah, I mean, early on, Ikens had the advantage. They had a metal use advantage. There was, I mean, the excess coming in early on from Dying Frame to open things up. As well, unit value advantage. Ikens managed to get an early advantage off of basically stopping those bandits. They lost a little bit in the process, but they stopped the bandits. And then a few more bandits came in and managed to stop them. But no further expansions happened. That was the big thing. I don't know why Icons didn't expand. And I mean, to be fair, it's something you have to remember. You have to bear in mind, oh yeah, I've got to expand, I've got to expand, I've got to expand. And it's a little intimidating sometimes. You think your opponent's going to just wreck your expansion before any value is gained. Maybe. If it lasts 30 seconds, though, you're good. Or rather, if a plus two value metal extractor, which most metal extractors are, lasts 30 seconds, then you're good. Because 75 metal for a metal extractor, after 32 and a half seconds, that's paid for. Everything after that's profit. So even if you lose it, it's no big deal. And if you retake a metal extractor, well, you've reclaimed a metal extractor. So that's about 40 metal from the metal extractor, on top of the fact that you now are getting a metal extractor. So you end up paying 35 metal roughly for the metal extractor, which means it only takes about 17 seconds to get the money back. So every time you retake metal extractors you it's cheaper you just get money back for it oh sorry if, if the metal extractor isn't heavily damaged i should say if, if it's just destroyed but not completely torn to pieces because reclaim does get damaged 30 by default 30 by default so it's 22 and a half seconds if you're reclaiming the metal extractor first so really that's worth it and considering that it takes you know 17 seconds to build in the first place with the reclaim it, it takes closer to well, it should take 23 seconds. A little bit longer, but again, more worth it because you get the metal to work with. There's never a reason not to build metal extractors. Just spread them across the map. If you want to build defenses on them, then you might you might want to. It's often a good idea. But as long as you expand, it'll provide you with the income you need to maintain the armies. And if Icons had done that, I could see them easily taking that match. They had a massive advantage early on. And basically just couldn't maintain the position. They couldn't build enough units compared to Dimefront. Anyway, that is that. Hope you enjoyed that. 
And that is going to be it for today for me. So thank you all for watching. I will be, of course, casting the Battle Royale stuff tomorrow. No, I won't be casting Battle Royale stuff tomorrow for PRL. I am taking a week off in that one. So I'll be in the next week. But anyway, until next time, thanks for watching and have a good night.